Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to another Tuesday Talks with Pastor. Amen. I'm so glad that you could join us. Why don't you give your friends a call? Text your sister or your brother. Tell your husband, come on in the living room. Pastor's on with another Tuesday Talk with Pastor. Glory be to God. Glad you're here, beloved. Let us pray. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' precious name. Father, we ask you today, Father, that you would look past all of our faults and our shortcomings. Lord, and use us today as an oracle of your word. Lord, as we study, we ask for your wisdom. Lord, we ask for your understanding. Lord, we ask for your articulation of speech, Lord, and uh, we ask, Lord, for poignant thought, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that uh, you would edify us today. And we pray this, God, in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Get your Bibles. Get your pen and your pencil. Get your Bibles. Get your pen and your pencils. Amen. You know, <clears throat> as I was thinking about the study today, I began to think about when we were considered the land of stars and stripes. We were considered the land of stars and stripes. But has the land of stars and stripes become the land of stress and strife? We are now officially the most anxious nation on the planet. We are officially the nation that suffers uh, from anxiety the most on this planet. How is it that, that, that we suffer so much as a nation with anxiety, and yet we are the most innovative we have ever been? The most innovative we have ever been. How is it now that, 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 that you're 18 and, and you're scared to death? Uh, should I go to college or should I stay home? Uh, you've been homeschooling and now all of a sudden your, your, your savings is running out and your anxiety is through the roof. You got a court case pending and, and you can't sleep. You found a mass, and, and you're waiting on the test results to come back. Hold on, I'm going to be on your street in a minute. You have to start a new job at 50. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you're pregnant and, and your man has left, and, and you're wondering, how am I going to make it? Or maybe, or maybe you just cannot stand being around people, so your anxiety goes sky high. Or maybe it's 3.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, and, and you are simply terrified about having to get out of bed. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're, you're, you're worried out of your mind because you believe nothing is working. What does all this anxiety mean? What does all this anxiety mean? You know what? It means that we're human. It does not mean that you're not a Christian. Let me cancel that right now. If you're suffering from anxiety, if worry has taken control of your life, yes, we have a problem. But that does not mean that you're not a Christian because Christians battle anxiety too. How do you know, Pastor? Because Jesus did. Let me show you something in the Bible. Let's look at Matthew 26, verse 36. Matthew 26, verse 36. Glory be to God. The Bible says, as they were, watch this, as they were, wait, excuse me, then Jesus came to them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him 
Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And watch this. He began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. What's that? Worried. Watch this. The Bible says, Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. What's that? Anxiety. Have you ever been in a place or are you in a place now that uh, you are sorrowful and in deep distress? Are you in a place now where you're exceedingly sorrowful in your soul? I want to tell you, you're not by yourself. Jesus went through this. The Bible says he was exceedingly sorrowful even on to death. He said, stay here and watch with me. Stay here and pray with me. Wait a minute. Verse 39 says, he went a little further and he fell on his face. And he prayed. He fell on his face and he prayed. He surrendered and he prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He said, but watch this, watch this. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Now, you got to understand something. We think that our worry, our anxiety is over the top. Here's Jesus and his worry, his anxiety got so bad, the Bible says he began to sweat blood. Now, you know that's over the top. But look what Jesus did. He said, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will, God, be done. Mm -hmm. But what Jesus did was, watch this, what Jesus did was he prayed and he quickly turned it over to God. Yeah, Jesus, remember Jesus said anyway that he has been tempted in all places like you and I. You know, so he was saying that I went through everything that you guys going to go through when I put on an earth suit and walk with you for three and a half years. Jesus had a little anxiety, well, a lot, because he sweated blood. But watch this. Jesus prayed immediately and quickly turned it over to God. Now, now let's be clear before we get into this, right? There are some people that have a chemical imbalance that cause them anxiety. And these individuals may need a physician and medication. I'm not talking about that. And yes, that is a situation that can take place. And if that's you and you have a chemical imbalance and, and you need a physician and, 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 and medication, I want you to know you're still in the will of God. You're still a Christian. Let me tell you why. Because the Bible says, Jesus said in Psalms 103, he says that we have a benefit plan with him. He says that we're healed of every sickness and disease. But what we do as Christians, we try to put Jesus in a box and say, oh, okay, Jesus, I'm healed. You got to do it by prayer. I'm healed. You got to do it by me reading my word. So now this other person, if they don't do what you said they should do, then you think they won't be healed. Nonsense. Jesus just told us that he sent his, God sent his son Jesus and Jesus purchased our healing by his stripes. We're healed. But he never said how. You see, the how is Jesus' job. It's our job just to believe his word is absolutely true. Jesus can heal you with a prayer. Jesus can heal you with an angel, the touch of an angel. Jesus can heal you with anointing oil. Jesus can heal you, heal, heal you from a word from God. Jesus can heal you with surgery. Jesus can heal you with medicine. If the doctor healed you, it was still Jesus. If the medicine healed you, it was still Jesus. If the word healed you, it was still, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. If the word healed you, it was still Jesus. If the prayer healed you, it was still Jesus. If the pastor laid hands on you and you got healed, it was still Jesus. Because the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from heaven 
above. Jesus prayed, and, 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 and I believe that the Bible has given us the, uh, 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 the same instructions in the face of anxiety, in the face of worry. Let's look at the Bible in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Are you with me? Say amen. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4, start at verse 4. Philippians chapter 4, let's start at verse 4. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> and again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. Uh, the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about nothing. But in everything by prayer, supplication, and with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Watch this. And then he said, and then he said, finally, beloved, finally, brethren, finally, Christian, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, Whatever things that give virtue, whatever things that are praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Now, now let's take a look at scripture because here God is giving us instructions on how to deal with anxiety. He's given us some, some simple instructions. Uh, watch this. Watch this. The first thing God said was praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I want to ask you today, are you praising the Lord? The Bible says rejoice. In fact, he told us twice, praise the Lord. Are you praising the Lord? Okay. The second thing God said was uh, uh, be gentle with one another. What was he saying? Loving one another. Loving one another. Are you loving one another? And it's interesting because you, you might be saying, man, pastor, how, how can I love somebody and I'm so worried and I'm so full of anxiety? Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, uh, uh, let your gentleness be known to men. Watch this. Because the Lord is at hand. What was scripture saying? It's commanding us, hey, hey, love on one another because Jesus is with you. How do I have the power to love on somebody in the midst of this state of worrying that I'm in? Because Jesus is with me. Do you believe that today? I'm talking to somebody out there today who has been riddled with worry and anxiety. And I'm asking you right now, do you believe? Do you believe Jesus is with you? Say that with me. Jesus is with me. Jesus is with me. Beloved, I'm telling you, your declaration is very important. Say that with me. Jesus is with me. Glory be to God. Also, the Bible says that uh, 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 we should be supplication, that there should be supplication. What supplication? Saying what God, saying what God has said. Are you confessing the word over your situation? Are you confessing the word over your life? Then the Bible says, watch this, it says to put your mind on, remember it said the holy things, the true things, the noble things, the just things, the, the things that are true, the things that are praiseworthy. So I want to ask you, are you shifting your thoughts? Are you shifting your thoughts? Are you praising the Lord? Are you loving one another? Are you confessing the word? Are you shifting your thoughts? Beloved, you have to understand something. The Bible says if we do the possible, then God will do the impossible. So first, let's ask ourselves, are we doing the possible? Whether you, thinks it, whether you think it works or not, are you doing the possible? The Bible says if we do the possible, God will do the impossible. Are you with me? Is this all right right now? Are we still good? Yeah? 
Let's go further. Now, now, I'm not talking today about healthy concern. I'm not talking about concern. We're talking about worry because concern and worry are two different things. You see, anxiety is worry on steroids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But concern is something that you're still in control of and, and you are putting a plan in place to address it. Concern is something you're still in control of and that you're putting a plan in place to address it. Now, I know that there's some things that I have mentioned twice. If I say something twice, uh, I have not lost my thought. I'm just trying to emphasize it. Stay with me. Glory be to God. Worry is something that is controlling you. Worry is something that is controlling of me. Worry is controlling. Now, now let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Let's read a little bit, beloved. The Bible says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor what your body, nor about your body, what you will put on it. It's not, is not life, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Mm -hmm. Are you not of more value than they are? Watch this. Which of you, by worrying, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubic to your stature? So then why do you worry about clothing? Mm -hmm. consider, consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the fields, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you and I, O ye of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall I eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Uh -huh. For after all these things the Gentiles seek. Mm -hmm. For your heavenly Father knows that you need of all these things. But seek first, <laughs> but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Seek first God. All these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. And it's sufficient in the trouble therein. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God add a blessing to the reader and the hearer of his holy and inspired word. Now, now, now watch this. The Lord is commanding us in scripture not to worry. Not to worry. So that means that worry is outside the will of God. Watch this. Worry is when you look at your situation through your own might and through your own power. That's why Jesus said, I shifted this thing uh, 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 to God. Not my will, but God, your will be done. Have you shifted and given it to God? Have you shifted, not my power, not my might, but by your Holy Spirit, God? Have you shifted this thing? Or are you looking at it through the eyes of your own might and your own power? Watch this. Watch this, beloved. Worry says, God, I believe you can get me to heaven, but I don't believe you can take care of me on earth. Let me say that again. 
Worry says this. God, I believe you can get me to heaven, but I don't believe you can take care of me down on earth. Is that you today, beloved? Three times there is a command not to worry. So worry is outside of the will of God. And anything outside of the will of God is sin. Mm -hmm. Anything outside the will of God is sin. Mm -hmm. Worry, anxiety means to be torn in two. Worry and anxiety means to be torn in two. Is worry controlling you? Does worry own you? Is worry dictating who you are? Is worry dictating where you go? Is worry dictating where you are? Is worry dictating what you do? Is worry dictating whether you function? Is worry dictating whether you get up or not? Wow. Let's look at let's let, let's look let's look at some reasons uh, uh, for worry to control your life. Let's look at some reasons why worry can control your life. Let's look at some reasons why worry is controlling your life. Look at uh, chapter 6, verse 22. Let's look at chapter 6, verse 22. And again, I say to you, if I mention something twice, we're not lost. I just want to emphasize that. Because you remember when Jesus said something three times, verily, 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 he was trying to get your attention. This is important. Amen? This is important. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. And it says this. We're talking about some reasons. The Bible says the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is dark, how great is the darkness? The Bible says no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Hmm. Now, one of the big reasons that we worry has to do with resources. One of the big reasons that we worry has to do with resources. God is saying, if you want to get rid of worry, you got to get rid of one of your masters. If you want to get rid of worry, you have to get rid of one of your masters because worry and anxiety will tear you in two. What are you saying, Pastor? You see, you got Jesus on one side, and, and you got something else controlling you on the other side, and they're pulling at you, and they're pulling at you. So what are they doing? They're tearing you in two. The Bible says, worry, <laughs> the Bible says, worry, uh, will tear you in two because worrying is trying to serve two masters and you cannot do that. Worry is uh, to be torn in two. Watch this. Uh, the Bible also describes us, it spoke of the light. It says, if the light is in your eye, then the whole body knows how to function properly. There is no torn between two. There is no, no, no controlling by being controlled by worry because the Bible says if the eye is in the light, if the light is in the eye, then the whole body is functioning properly. Well, then who is the light? The light is Jesus. You're right. The light is Jesus. So if 
our eye is on the light, the whole body is right. That ought to be a t-shirt. If the eye is on the light, the whole body is right. Let's look at Isaiah 26.3. Let's turn to Isaiah 26.3. Isaiah 26.3. The Bible says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on Jesus. He says you, but he's talking about Jesus. Watch this, because he trusts you. Uh, uh, the Bible is saying that you will have perfect peace if you keep your eye on the light, if you keep your eye on Jesus, and you do that because you trust him. Watch this, watch this, because you trust him. One of the reasons uh, uh, we stay worried is because we stay divided. One of the reasons we stay worried is because we stay divided. Let me ask you a question, beloved. How is it that we are so worried about the things concerning life and we won't trust him who gave us life? How is it that we're so worried about the things concerning life and we won't trust him who gave us life. Don't you think that if Jesus gave us life, he will give us everything we need for that life? Come on, somebody. Come on. Now, now don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that in this life we won't have trouble. Yes, we will. Because the Bible says Jesus, Jesus even said so himself. He said, in this life, we will have tribulation. And then he said right after that, but be of good cheer. Why? He said, because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close, beloved. I could talk about this all day, but we're running out of time. And so I, I want to close right here. But before I close, I want to implore you today to trust Jesus right where you are. I, I don't know what you're, you're worried about today. I don't know what level your anxiety is at today. But I'm asking you, beloved, right in the middle of all of that, Will you trust Jesus today? Will you trust Jesus today? Will you trust Jesus today? The Bible says that, that Jesus is where our peace is. The Bible says uh, our peace is in him. Our peace in this life is in Jesus. In fact, the Bible said, Jesus said, I left you my peace, beloved, a peace that passes all understanding. Now, before we leave today, before I close, I have a word for somebody. There's somebody out there that is listening to me under the sound of my voice. You've been struggling. And God sent me with a word for you, for you. God told me to tell you this Tuesday evening that you should be confident of this very fact that God is going to complete a good work he started in you. Now, I don't know who this is I'm talking to, but if this is your word, I want you to to, to send us a Facebook uh, uh, a comment or send us an email or send us a text and let us know that, Pastor, that word was for me. God told me before I close to tell you, and I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but I just hear it real heavy in my spirit that God wants me to tell you today, beloved, that I need you right where you are, right in the middle of your situation, to be confident of this very fact. What fact, preacher? That God 
will complete the work he started in you. Do you believe it today? Say amen. Well, God bless you guys. We love you. We're so glad that you joined us this Tuesday evening. You know, it's been a pleasure. I really love you guys. Why don't you come out and join us on Wednesday? Uh, we're studying Isaiah chapter 10, line upon line, precept upon precept. Also, we've been having a fantastic time on Sunday morning. We have a 9 a.m. service, beloved. It's a quieter service, but then we have an 1130 service. Now we get excited there. We, we just take the handcuffs off the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. But why don't you come out and join us? Because for us at Mount Zion Tabernacle Church, we don't care how you come through the doors. We just care how you leave. We have a statement of truth in our church that says, if it ain't Bible, it ain't Bible. And I want you to know today, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Come as you are. Come tall. Come small. Come big. Come tiny. Come worried. Come broken. Uh, uh, come battered. Come bruised. It doesn't make a difference. We don't care how you come. We just care how you leave. We are a non-denominational church, spirit-filled, and we just love the Lord, and we love you. See you soon, beloved. God bless you.